title of my message this morning is Preparing for Battle. Okay, so I'm, I talk to young people, so I'm going to talk to young people this morning. Talk to the kids this morning. It's all about you guys today. And so if you learn, if you learn something from the sermon this morning, parents, great. If not, and I'm, I apologize, you have to wait for Pastor Jonathan's next week or the following week. Let's bow heads for prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, this is your time. And I pray again for your Holy Spirit to come into this place. Fill our lives, Lord, with your Spirit, especially our hearts, that we might be open to receive your word this morning. I pray, Lord, that you'll touch my lips, that nothing that comes out of my mouth is not from me, but from you. Speak to us through your word this morning, Father God, and bless us. Bless us, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Let all God's people say, Amen, Amen. Amen. August 2013, the 12th, a lady by the name of Abby decided, well, I'm just going to go for a run. Who likes running here? A lot of people like running here. I like run. I like to run. Yeah? I know some of you are looking at me, <laughs> don't believe me, but <clears throat> I used to like running. Now I like, I enjoy running that's done horizontally, you know, you're in your sleep and you just run. <laughs> okay, sometimes my eyes do the running for me, you know, you just look at people run and it hurts my eyes. Um, so yeah, um, and she decided, well, I'm just going to go for a run. And the back of her house in Michigan were the woods. And this particular morning, as she's running, she decides to run. 12-year-old girl, she's running. Now, what do you need to run? You know, you need what? What do you, what do you need? You need good running shoes, that's right. There are new shoes that come out. Did you know that uh, a couple of months ago, they've broken the two-hour uh, marathon mark? Yeah? New shoes, that's right. It's got springs in it, and it's just foam. and It's, it's amazing, yeah? I think it's called Nike. Fly at night or something like that, yeah, okay. So I'm waiting to order those shoes um, next year. But this girl must have had some good running shoes on, she's getting ready, she's probably got shorts, you know, lightweight, she's prepared for this run, so she locks the door, she goes out, takes a look out, oh, that's a beautiful day for running, and she decides to run, she runs, whoa, and she's running through the woods, running through the All of a sudden, out of the woods, jumps a big black bear. Presses her to the ground and she says, oh, I didn't know what to do, I was just struggling. trying to get away from it. Guess what? She gets away. And so she's running. She's hiding, finding a tree to hide. And then all of a sudden, she turns and the bear, same bear, comes the other way and gets her a second time. And somewhere in that struggle, she remembers, she remembers this. She remembers this. Someone once said that in a struggle with a bear, play dead. And that's what she did. A couple of seconds later, she feels the claws of the bear, the bear, the bear <laughs> move from her and starts turning away and runs away from the skill. And Abby looks up. And the bear, like only, a, you know, maybe five meters away, turns his head, looks back at Abby, turns around again and starts running again. Abby gets up, sprints all the way home, and she makes it to where her dad is. And dad looks at her, I've just been attacked by a bear. No. She gets up close, and dad looks at her, uh-oh, this is a bear attack. And she spends the next three weeks in intensive care and hospital. Now, who here has ever had an encounter with a bear? Mama bear? Mama bear? Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say that. 
Do we have like mama bears or husband bears or do we have children bears that we uh, encounter every single day? A lot of us encounter that. Check this out, this video out. Interesting, yeah? Hmm. And that's the reason why you don't find any Samoans doing outdoor rec. <laughs> yeah? We don't like camping, we don't like uh, going bike riding. Because who's silly enough to go bike riding in the forest, yeah? We like to play volleyball, basketball, it's all inside a gym, yeah? And you're safe inside the gym. But imagine coming across a bear like this. Hmm. I don't know about you, but when I saw that video, whew, this guy must have been pedaling pretty quick, yeah? Probably 40, maybe 50 kilometers an hour. I don't know. If I was on that bike, I'd probably be doing 80 kilometers an hour. But hey, it's still all right, yeah? And the Bible says this. The Bible says this. When Goliath looked at David and saw that he was only a boy, tanned and handsome, he looked down on David with disgust. Oof. Forty days. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a, I'm a soldier, and I'm going out every single day, every morning, and the Bible says every morning, every evening. And he goes out because all he wants to do is do what he's called to do, and that is to, hey man, I want to beat, beat down on somebody. He goes out and he calls anyone else from Israel today. And no one steps out. He's getting agitated, he's, he's getting upset, he's getting angry, the Bible says. He, he's upset that there's no one to challenge him. For 40 days, 39th day, is there anybody in all of Israel? Oh, who can take me on? Oh, and no one is brave enough. But then on the 40th day, there's this little boy, the Bible says he's just a boy, and he steps out. Oh, you've been wanting to fight. You're waiting for a man, and God sends this boy. It makes him even more angry. A little boy. I'm wanting to fight. Not only that, he comes out. The problem is the boy, number two, he's tanned. He must be Pacific Islander. Hey, and says, he's handsome. He comes out and goes, well, this guy's on the face of a teenage magazine. I've been scarred. I've got the muscles. And he comes out, he's looking all pretty. Makes him angry, the Bible says. And so he goes on to say this. But David said to Saul, I, your servant, have been keeping your father's sheep. When a lion or bear came and took a sheep from the flock, how do you prepare to meet a giant by the name of Goliath? Next verse. 35, it says this. I will chase it. 
I would attack it and save the sheep from its mouth. When it attacked me, I caught it by its fur and hid it and killed it. I, your servant, have killed both a lion and a bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like them because he had spoken against the armies of the living God. You see how he prepared? He prepared for Goliath by killing a lion and a bear. Now, I don't know about you, but just a couple of weeks ago, there was a big fight in the heavyweight division, yeah? A guy by the name of Deontay Wilder and a British guy by the name of Tyson Fury. Now, their pre preparation was probably running kilometers, going to the gym. And you ask David, David, what's your preparation? Oh, yeah, I just kill a lion. What? David gets up one morning. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Dun -dun -dun. Come on, bear, where are you? I, um, it's not normal to train like that. Yeah, I just grabbed it by his fur and... <laughs> it's crazy. But that's what the Bible says. That's his training. And how do you prepare for the giant? Well, he just killed a lion and a bear. How did he prepare for the lion and the bear? Is the question this morning. Church, number one point is this. Be obedient. To all our youth, to all our kids this morning, we're living in hard times. Are we living in troubled times, church? Yes. Are we living in troubled times? Yes. We are. Are our kids troubled? Yes. I remember growing up as a kid. Mom and Dad always used to sing the song. I didn't get it until now, being a parent. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Is that right? For the Father up above is... Yeah. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. What are our kids watching nowadays? Oh, be careful, little ears, what you... I'm just using my mum's uh, way of singing it to me. Be careful, little hands. Your feet, nearly every part of the body. Well, we're living in tough times. And God says, hey, prepare someone for battle. You need to be obedient. Is that correct? Here's what the Bible says. Children, obey your parents as the Lord wants because this is the right thing to do. I can hear a lot of parents go, yeah. Is that correct? Children, obey your parents as the Lord wants. Say amen, parents. We want our children to be obedient to us. And how we prepare for battle is having children that, are, that, that listen to instructions from their parents, but most importantly, listen to the instructions from God. See, when you're obedient, you listen to one voice. You don't have all these other voices that, 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 you, that, you, that you listen to. But God is saying, hey, your children need to listen to instructions. They need to be obedient. You see, looking after sheep is, is probably a difficult job, yeah? You've got to get up early. You've got to go out there and not only do they smell, but, you know, you've got to feed them. You've got to take them from one patch to another. You've got to clean them up. You've got to share them sometimes. Help them give birth to other lambs. It's a bad job. And Jesse goes, son, go out and tend the flock. No worries, Dad, I'll do that. And kids, this morning, God not only wants us to be obedient, but he wants us to do it with the right attitude. Is that right? Son, can you go um, fix up your bed? Yes. They come with this attitude. Yes, I'll do it, Dad. I wonder why some of them see stars. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 
But you know what? It's also important that we parents show obedience as well. Is that correct? Because there's a saying that says, monkey see, monkey what? The reason why some of our kids are like that is because they see us, you know, oops, yellow light, red light, oh, oh, I can do that too, Dad, when I grow older. Uh, Pastor, can you just sit down, please? I'll talk to you later. Oh, if my parents can speak like that to the pastor, I can speak like that to the pastor. Our kids grow up learning from us. We need the right attitudes, and parents can learn to be obedient as well. Listening to your leaders, set a good example for our young people. Parents, when you become difficult, young people will learn from that. We have to model it. Amen? Number one, be obedient. Number two is this. Have a relationship with God. Okay, next verse. But now your kingdom will not continue. The Lord has looked for the kind of man he wants. He has appointed him to rule his people because you haven't obeyed his command. Poor Samuel, he had to go up. Hey, um, king, there's someone else in line. So, who's this someone? Well, someone that God has chosen that has the same heart as his. And so you're going to be stripped of your kingship, your royalship, your rulership. A person after God's own heart. And he chooses David. To prepare for battle, one needs to have a relationship with God. I mean, how many of us here... Um, how many marriages here have been together for five years? Anyone here? Put your hand up, please. Any, any longer? Let's go 10. We're going to up, up and up. Yeah? More than 10 years? Any more than 10 years? Let's go 15. Go 15, go once, go twice, three times. Yep. What about 20? 20 years? Okay. Those who haven't reached 20, say amen to the 20s. 25. 25, wow. Can we go even higher? 30? 30 years? Can we go higher than that? 35? Any other takers? No? 40? So 30, 30 years. More than 30 years? 35. 35. 64 years marriage, Maria? Oh, wow. Praise the Lord. 64 years of marriage. You see, when you're in a relationship that long, you basically know the other person. Is that correct? Yeah? You know the other person. And you, you know what I like about um, knowing the other person is that you get to know their thoughts as well, yeah? You know what they're thinking, you know what... For example, see, I can sit with my wife at the airport or anywhere, yeah, your bus stop, or we can sit at the park... And we're just sitting there, and all of a sudden, someone walks in front of us um, and is doing something, I don't know, silly maybe, and all of a sudden, I don't say anything. As soon as I see it, I turn to my wife, my wife looks at me, and we both giggle. Why? Because we're thinking the same things. <laughs> you see that guy's orange pants? We're thinking the same things. We like the same things. You, know, you, you, you have the same thoughts as that person because you spent time together. <coughs> You've spent time together. You develop that relationship. And let, the Bible says, let us have the mind that was in Christ Jesus. And what does that mean? What does that mean? It means you develop the mind of God. And that's scary, yeah? That's a scary thought. You develop the mind of... You can think the same things as God, same desires. You can develop a relationship with God. And here's the thing that you don't have to wait for. You don't have to wait until you're old to have a relationship with God. You can have a relationship with God right now. Even this boy had a relationship with God. And let me just say this thing. 
to all the, the children here and all the, uh, the youth here. Don't limit okay, your relationship with God by checking out the other people's relationship with God. Don't let the standard, uh, the pastor's uh, standard of his relationship be your standard. I want you to go closer than the pastors. I want you to go closer than the elders. Go closer than your parents. I want you guys to get closer to God. And, and that does, that, that, um, you, you need a couple of things to be able to do that. Number one is Bible study. Okay, we were, known, we were well known as people of the, the Bible, Seventh-day Adventists. Is that correct? Okay. I'm sitting in a Bible study. <clears throat> this recorded. I'm sitting in a Bible study. A Seventh-day Adventist Bible study. A youth group. A youth group. I remember this young person grew up in the church. And so one of my questions was this. So, what is salvation? This young person is brought up in the church. In fact, the parents are ministers of the church. They're elderly now. And the response came back, what is salvation? Um, salvation is um, like Salvation Army. Growing up in the church, have kids. What is salvation? Salvation is uh, salvation, salvation army. That's the answer we got. To have a relationship with God, we need to study the Word of God. Number two, we need to learn how to pray. And a lot of us, we can do these prayers, it's called closet prayers, where you just open up to God. I grew up learning one grace growing up, you know, over the food. It was the same grace over and over. God doesn't want that. God wants us to change our prayers. To tell Him from our heart, yeah? Tell Him what we have in our hearts. Open up to God. Not only do we, does He want us to pray, but learn to fast because it helps build the spiritual body. How many of us fast here or have ever done fasting before? You yeah, know, it's a really good discipline, yeah? Really good discipline. And if you want to start fasting, I'll encourage you to talk to your pastor, come and talk to me. The best way to fast one day for me is Friday, uh, Thursday evening to Friday evening. Because you open Sabbath together and then you break that fast. Just one day. Start off one day. Have you ever fasted for a whole week? I've fasted for a whole week. Just on water. It's a good feeling. You can tell I haven't done that for years yet, but it's a good feeling when you fast because, hey, I want to eat. Hey, you're depending on God, yeah? You're calling on God. Number four is biblical meditation where you focus on the Word of God. God, what are you trying to say to me? How do I apply this to my life? And number five, you need to share it. You need to share the Word of God. So number one, we need to be obedient in order for us to be prepared to take on the Goliaths in life. Number two is this, we need to have a relationship with God. The closer we get to God, the more we know of God's love for us. And number three is this, develop talent. Now I know many of us, we all have gifts and talents. And Timothy says, hey, we need to fan the flames, yeah? The gifts of God, the, God the, the gifts that God has given us, the talents, we need to expand it. And, and for David, he, he was playing this harp, and, and by playing that harp, he was able to enter into the palace and play for the king. And a lot of us young people, you know, we, ah, oh, should I really play? Should I get up and use my talent of speaking? Should I really sing that song? Oh, I don't know if... It, God is encouraging you this morning to get up and use your skills and your talents to worship God and to share God with others. Amen? Your skills will open doors of opportunity. Heart brought him to the king's place. He didn't wait for the crisis to, to, to practice. He was already practicing before he got to the crisis. He didn't just turn up and, yeah, I want to take you on, and he hasn't even had training. He was slinging 
he was practicing sling and, and, and using stones way before he even got to, he got to, the, uh, to Goliath. When we meet trouble, before we even meet trouble, we need to keep training and preparing ourselves for those battles. Use it or lose it. 2 Timothy 1 verse 6 says, Fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. God had a plan for David's life. You need to have a relationship with me now. You can now fight the lions and bears because he could fight a lion and a bear. He was able to take on Goliath, take on an important role in King Saul's army, take on kingship. In the end times, there are two types of people. There's going to be Goliath and there's going to be David's. People who are self-reliant, like Goliath. Reliant on his armor. They're reliant on his own, on, on own experience. Relying on their height or their good looks. Relying on people who they are connected with. Relying on wealth or position. They're reliant on education. They're reliant on parents or their spouses. Reliant on everyone else except for God. But for David, those who are on David's side, They'll be standing on that day and they say, hey, our strength and our battle belongs to who? Belongs to the Lord. So they are reliant on God. We choose that easy route, but it's going to be a tough one. But we go through the difficult route, like David. But there is a place awaiting all of us. And it's heaven. It's not easy. But we will get there. Why? Because God is on our side. What's the song again? It's not an easy road. We're traveling to heaven for many other roses along the... Is that the words? Roses? No, no, no. Thorns. It was never easy. For David, he grew up, he had to go and tend sheep, and then he was called to take on kingship, and it was a tough battle to get to where he was. He sinned along the way, but the Bible says he was a man after God's own heart. He kept relying on God. He made mistakes along the way, but he asked God to forgive him. And that's where we need to be. As fellow Christians, as, those, as believers who want to do the best and prepare for those Goliaths every single day, we need to obey the voice of God. We need to be in close communication with Him. And not only that, we need to share the talents that we have so that people can also be prepared to meet God. Young people, my sermon this morning is encouraging you. Hey, we're living in tough times, like I said before. But we need young people who are willing to stand up when the world is at its worst. We need a church that will be at its best. In Matthew 16, Jesus turns and says to Peter, Peter, you know, you will build the church on me. And he wasn't talking about four walls. He wasn't talking about a location called Frankston. He was talking about a people that will stand up and go out and do battle for God. The only way we can prepare, be obedient, be in a relationship, and use the gifts and talents that God has given us. God bless us, and may we continue to prepare for that day when Jesus will come again and take us home. So why don't we stand up, stand up, fight for God while we have the opportunity. Amen. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for your spirit that is with us in this place this morning. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, of our calling. You know that there are many Goliaths that we, uh, that we encounter every single day, every single week. 
Father God, thank you for reminding us that we need to stay close to you. We need to uh, be obedient to your words. And we need to share you to others. Father God, it's never easy being a Christian. And you never said it was going to be easy. But if we just hold on, we know that there's a crown of life awaiting all of us on that glorious morning. So help us to stand firm for you today and to continue to shine your light around Frankston, around our homes, and around the environment that surrounds us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.